Welcome back to DXB Today, where we're celebrating all things food with a specific focus uh, on, of course, uh, for the Emirati talent, the local homegrown talent that are not just expressing themselves through food, but also building up great businesses here as well. Uh, let's go to our next guest now, who is a friend of mine already. Why? He's brought me three litres of ice cream alongside me. So this is going to be a very straightforward interview. I'm going to eat ice cream. And of course, we're going to speak to the founder of Canvas Gelato, uh, Ahmed Omari, who joins us now here live in the studio. Emma, thanks so much indeed for joining us. Thank you for having me. Great to have you here. Um, listen again, as we were just explain, you know, we were just talking about the competitiveness of obviously the cafe culture. There is a com competition out there amongst gelato, ice cream and ice lollies at the moment. What sets Canvas apart from the others and what prompted you to set it up? So I started Canvas in 2017. Mm. And when I started in 2017, there was um, a gap in the market where most of the ice cream and gelato places would source and create um, gelatos and ice creams made from ready-made pastes and syrups and ingredients. Yeah. So how we set ourselves apart was we start every recipe from scratch. Mm. Uh, we roast and grind our nuts and seeds. We make our own caramel sauces, jams. Uh, we bake our own bakeries that you can find in the ice cream. So we control the whole process. Mm. And that is very uh, different from what's available out there. Yeah, mm. control. Yeah. It is incredible that you discovered this gap in the market, but do you think the consumers, this is something that mattered to them if their ice cream was made from scratch or from pre-prepared pre -prepared ingredients? Some, some customers do care, mm -hmm. but the, uh, you know, the proof is in the pudding. If you, can, <laughs> if, you can, uh, if you have total control of your uh, process and ingredients, then you can start reiterating on your recipes and improving them. Uh, if I was a gelateria that, you know, sources ingredients from certain suppliers, then there isn't much control that I can do. We, and we also have the freedom of creating unique recipes that aren't uh, available in the market. So maybe as a consumer, I don't care about the fact that this is from scratch, but the fact that this is from scratch enables me to create different combinations and different recipes that aren't available in the market. Ahmed, I, uh, when I Googled, canvas gelato I, I saw a phrase which i absolutely loved which was good enough to make the italians blush <laughs> uh, so i'm very much looking forward to taking one of them home but tell me how important it has been for you in this process to also collaborate with other local brands ever since we started mm. a collaboration was always part of our dna yeah and we have collaborated with uh, you know many brands many uh, food producers cafes and restaurants such as to the moon and back uh, we work closely with Mirzan Chocolate Makers and the idea behind the collaborations is we try and bring a product that is greater than you know, both parts uh, separately. Mm -hmm. So we work for example with Mirzan Chocolate, we source the chocolate from them, we create two unique recipes of soft serve ice cream and the gelatos and we try and bring something very unique to the table. I mean, uh, for one, I'm definitely uh, a person who cares about things made from scratch, especially when it comes to food. This is why I serve canvas gelato into the moon and back. And I have a question uh, for you, Ahmed, since uh, you come up with very distinctive uh, flavors. How do you come up with these recipes? Because they're very unique from the rest of the market. The way we create recipes is we seek inspiration from ingredients, manufacturers, uh, suppliers sometimes or even close brands that we work with. And many of these ingredients do work together, but in a very different context. So we, we've done a goat cheese and figs uh, ice cream, and you go to a restaurant and you find a goat cheese and fig uh, salad, uh, and nobody, no, no, nobody has created a rule that says goat cheese and figs only work in a salad. You can have them in ice cream and you can have them in any other form. So we try and bring some sort of familiarity to the ice cream tub. That doesn't mean that most of these flavors are very, very strange. And we, do, we try not to seek strange combinations. Most of the combinations make sense. So one of the recipes we have over here is uh, hazelnut latte, oh, yep. which, well, is, uh, which is hazelnut gelato infused with uh, freshly roasted beans sourced from Raw Coffee Company. 
uh, and we make our own chocolate chips as well. So hazelnut and coffee and chocolate are a pairing that you can find elsewhere, but not necessarily in ice cream. Let's talk me through the black sesame one as well. That's a unique one. Yes, so black sesame, we source our uh, black sesame seeds from oh, yes. our favorite local grocer, uh, Asian grocer, uh, 1004 Gourmet. Uh, they source their black sesame seeds from uh, Japan. We roast them, we grind them. The grinding process takes about four or five hours. And then we make an ice cream base out of it. Most popular flavor? Pistachio baklava. But that's <laughs> like asking me who my favorite child is. <laughs> <laughs> so that's your personal favorite, is it? And it's the best seller. Okay, course. and it's the best seller as well. So it's the best seller across the board. Extraordinary uh, story. Uh, we can't thank you enough for coming in as well. I can thank you for having me. Guarantee that they're cold as well. They're properly cold. <laughs> uh, so thank you, Ahmed. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Ahmed. Today's Spotlight is on a pilot with a passion for baking. Pie Planet focuses on baking the world a better place, one pie at a time. This is Salman Al-Banna from Pie Planet. Uh, my name is Salman Al-Banna and the business is Pie Planet and it's a homegrown um, bakery that specializes in uh, pie making. Um, looking at uh, getting into the niche element of a bakery, uh, especially when it comes to sweets, and uh, noticed that uh, there was um, a big gap when it comes to things like pies and some other baked goods. And that was where my passion came in, and this is why I, I targeted that specific product. Being a huge scene where you have various types of, of challenges, so I think setting up the business and getting it going was one of the biggest uh, challenges. Um, hoping with, with, with this bakery is we expand um, into getting our product to as many uh, customers as possible while still maintaining um, the quality and standard of what, uh, what we started with. Um, Dubai as I see it and as we everyone has seen in the in the past decade I'd say has been a melting pot of, of just different cultures, different ideas, different um, just different businesses as well coming in from the smallest homegrown business to uh, largest enterprises as well. Baking the world a better place, by far the best tagline I've heard in a very, very long time. But for now, it is time for the roundup. Tom, tell us what's the buzz in town. Well, nimmy nimmy, we have, of course, got ourselves a bit of a food feature today. And times were that uh, here in Dubai and certainly the UAE, you get a lot of international brands coming into town. They put the logo up, they bring the executive chef over for what? two weeks or something, and then they would sort of trade on that reputation. Times have changed. And it's now about, of course, a lot of local talent coming through, homegrown brands developing themselves here, uh, creating that great following, and the success therefore allows them to go further afield. And that's why we are starting to see in recent years, homegrown brands from here in Dubai, here in the UAE, now opening up in cities all over the world. It was. You know, a few at the beginning, we saw the first couple making their name, and now we're seeing a whole swathe of brands going uh, across. And I think that's just adding into this argument that there is a thriving food scene here for everyone, for those coming from all corners of the globe, for the uh, extraordinary uh, foodie founders here in the UAE as well. But the international audience, they come, they try it on holiday or their time here, and they want to take it to other parts of the world. Um, London is a point in case at the moment and I'll give you a little uh, personal anecdote my daughter finished school uh, earlier on this year she's on a gap year at the moment she went to work in a restaurant in London that was born in Dubai Main uh, Oyster Boy and Grill now of course in Mayfair as well it's a perfect story the question I suppose I've got is is this good for the industry, this furthering of a field for, for homegrown brands? I mean, definitely. It's amazing that we're being recognized. It means like we are 
thriving in the industry and we're doing something very special that is being recognized internationally and want to be taken out there. I mean, this is definitely one of the things that I aspire for to the moon and back, not just be recognized uh, locally, but definitely globally as well and internationally. Mm -hmm. So yeah, was, it's such an amazing thing. There was such a huge demand, I remember a few years ago, for the Michelin star guide oh, yeah. to be here in Dubai. In 2022, it finally launched. I mean, last year, so many local homegrown brands got a star as well. I think that that really increases the standards mm -hmm. and increases the, you know, demand for, for a good level uh, of service and food as a whole. Um, you know, Ash, I feel like you're the biggest foodie yes. on these sofas. <laughs> what do you think? I love food and I'm so proud to see so many international uh, TV chefs open their restaurant chains over here. One of my personal favorites, uh, I'm from India originally, so I'm a little bit biased. I love Indian food and my favorite Indian restaurant is Tresen. And I just read recently that the group behind Tresen Studio, Tresen, by the way, you were just talking about Michelin star. They won their second Michelin star this year and they're planning to expand and open a few branches in India, which makes me so proud because that is one restaurant I constantly recommend to everyone. And I love the buzz around taking, because usually the trend was us importing foreign brands over here. But the fact that, you know, we are exporting some of our local home brands is definitely a moment so question, for, to be proud of. I know you, you, you share with me that you're traveling a little bit um, later on in the year. Yeah. If there was a homegrown brand opened up in a city that you travel to, mm -hmm. would you be inclined to go and visit it? Definitely. I mean, if I saw Jabal Al Noor in the middle of Mayfair, then I'm definitely going there. I'm very old Dubai, so I'm very biased to the, the cafeterias because it takes me back to my childhood. You know, I, I've been in this country long enough where for five dirhams you could eat two shawarmas and drink a Pepsi. So mm. it definitely makes me very, very proud. I would definitely love to see Jabal Al Noor in London. So, so Ash's Christmas dinner is going to be at Ravi's in London. <laughs> yeah, I think. For that sure, for sure. That would work. Yeah. <laughs> right. Lots more coming up on the show. Nimi, please tell us what it is. Yeah, absolutely. We have, after the break, we take a look at what's buzzing at Mina's Market. Uh, Khalid heads down there to the brand new spot. Plus, we have a very special performance coming from The Ark out and about. Don't go nowhere. 